number four. We've got Rip the Dream versus Repro. And Battlefield of Eternity is going to be our first map here for the first round of this HGC Open Division Tournament. It's going to be your top 32 round for this one. And uh, looking forward, look, been looking forward to this one for a few days. Totally excited about casting Open Division for these teams. Uh, like I said, I, we, we may have a co-caster coming in a little bit later, but for now, we're going to be forging ahead solo this best of three series here for Open Division. And right now, um, Repro is going to be the first pick, first ban here, as Rip the Dream had their uh, map pick here after the bans. These guys got right to it, and Anubarak is going to be the first ban out here for the side of Repro. Not a big surprise. Uh, nubarak has been very prominent in the meta right now. It's very hard to deal with those web wraps post-10. He's got CC for days. And when you got these eternal battles uh, in the mid here on Battlefield of Eternity, it can be kind of rough to have to deal with that all the time. Ariel going to be the next ban out here. It's actually just, uh, just that just tiny bit here. I like being able to see the... <laughs> see who's drafting what here. Rip the Dream, going to go ahead and ban out the Ariel. So that's going to proc the instant snap pick here from Repro for Uther. Arthas and Tassadar going to be the response picks. Uh, Arthas has been also pretty prominent. Uh, both Anubarak and Arthas, two of the most prominent tanks so far in HGC uh, that I've been seeing recently, I should say. Um, Tassadar, of course, has been a very highly contested hero as well. We're seeing him early banned quite often. But uh, usually usually paired with a hyper carry and another strong healer. So, you know, we could see possibly the Rhaegar coming later in this draft. We'll see if Repro wants to try to apply that healer chokehold now that Rip the Dream has kind of started to uh, commit to that double support strategy. We might want to take the stronger healers out of the game. So we've already got Uther and Ariel off the board. The next couple that I think of are Stukov, Rhaegar, um, and then it kind of it kind of goes down the line from there. It's kind of it's kind of the, the four in the meta, and everybody else is just kind of in the lower tier. So Graming going to be the pickup here. Uh, good solid immortal damage here on Boe and Diablo. Also, also pretty good in the. Um, in the PVE damage department as far as tanks go. Uh, but there's also a, another really good um, mechanic that Diablo brings in his kit is uh, there's a lot of, of terrain in the middle of this map that can be easily collided with. So Diablo with that shove is gonna be able to get stuns most of the time. Uh, it's not really hard to get angles correctly. I think that's why Ariel also is a pretty highly contested hero on this map. She doesn't have particularly great hope generation um, on this one because there's not quite as much team fighting especially early on uh, if you need to step back take a breather try and get your team healed up Ariel's not exactly the one you want here on battlefield so uh, what makes her good is the is the terrain that that the whip can collide into so Medivh gonna be the ban out here for rip the dream Or is, is it Rip the Dream, or is it, is it just Rest in Peace? Uh, now I gotta, now now I'm now I gotta check. Let's see. It is indeed Rip the Dream. Glad I got that one right. So uh, the response ban here of Vala, uh, probably the best hyper carry. Um, I you know also I think Lunara should should be something that that Rip is uh, definitely thinking about here. Also, a pretty good counter to the Uther heals would almost force Repro to go into that double heal scenario. And there it is, right on cue. They're going to grab the Rhaegar and the Lunara. Um, so Nara, though, with that spread damage, especially if she goes Splintered Spear here, can, can do really, really good AoE damage to counter the Uther. She can also, at 7, decide to go with the Nature's Calling to get the extra damage out on the Immortal. So we'll have to see who is uh, who, who is going to be their main Immortal damage dealer. Right now, it's certainly Lunara. 
But Rhaegar also puts quite a lot of damage out. There was a recent um, calculation put out there by somebody. I don't even remember who exactly it was, but it's uh, calculated who had the highest amount of immortal damage here for Battlefield of Eternity per second, um, a 1 through 7, and that is Rhaegar with that Lightning Bond talent. So Rhaegar is going to definitely aid the, the race potential of Rip the Dream here, Repro. Also having pretty good race potential with Greymane, but they still probably want another backline damage dealer as well as a frontline. I could see I could see Li Ming being a possibility for them here. Um, against the double support, it can be kind of rough. So they're going to actually go the direction of Cassia instead here. And with that Lunara AoE damage, they are indeed going to go with the Brightwing for the AoE heals. And I'm not surprised. Uh, not, not at all. Because Uther's going to have a rough time handling Lunara. We've seen Brightwing being used more and more often as that secondary support to be able to aid uh, in, in keeping everybody alive. Uh, the, the Polymorph that, that she also brings is also pretty nice. I wouldn't be surprised to see a second, um, a second front line from Rip the Dream here. They have a couple different options if they want to go um, with some kind of frontline assassin. Uh, they could, you know, Genji is still on the table, though his immortal damage is not exactly the best. Um, but uh, the, the idea of the Brightwing is to definitely counter any of those frontliners they want to go. They probably still don't want to leave Arthas alone on that frontline, but they could, you know, they could decide to go into um, something even though it's a little bit countered by the Brightwing. But we'll have to see how they want to handle it here. They are going to go backline, so they're going to take a step back. Go for the more sustained. Leave Arthas out there on the island, who's probably going to be the main priority target for the ancestral. If um, you know, if nobody else is in trouble, Arthas is, is gonna gonna have to gonna have to. Maybe, I wouldn't say play carefully, but he's he's gonna have to be cautious up in that front line um, with all of the CC and and focus potential that uh, Repro have here. Well, they've definitely got the um, the advantage in the in the poke department here. It does rip the dream if it does come out to a long sustained poke battle? Um, Li Ming, Lunara, Tassadar, they all have really good mechanics to be able to pop in there, get an ability or two out, and then just back away. And that's and you know they really don't want to have to fight a defensive battle against the side of Reprot. You know they have a lot of mechanics to be able to close the gap, hard engage, um, and with with the Brightwing with Tall and Nasty on that Brightwing, probably gonna also see the Emerald Wind. So they're going to be looking to control the engages over on the side of Reprot. But we are loading in here for Game One, HGC Open Division, getting started off real quickly. On the left, it is Rip the Dream. Zabu Mafu going to be playing the Tassadar. Rival going to be on that Lunara. Popo going to be playing Rhaegar. Lieutenant Dan on the Leeming. And Aether Fog is going to be playing Arthas. On the right, Psycho Mashia going to be playing the Graeme. Sadat going to be on the Uther. Treebeard on Cassia. Tall and Nasty on the Brightwing. And MVV going to be playing the Diablo. This is Reprot. Right away, four-man rotation going to the bottom. They are going to be looking for picks. They've got CC potential over on the side of Reprot here in the bottom. Two-man top lane here for Rip the Dream. They're looking to isolate a Psycho Mashia. They do get some damage out on him. But we are going to see the Brightwing go ahead and teleport to the top. We're going to end up in the three, two stacks for both teams here. Slight wave clear advantage so far here to Reprot, but uh, there's a lot of wave clear potential over on the side of Rip the Dream, if Arthas and Rhaegar can get in there. And actually, Rhaegar, surprisingly at level one, not going the way of the uh, Lightning Bond. Actually going with that Wolf Run. A little extra speed when he's in Wolf form, but uh, not going to be able to get quite as much damage out for the Immortal. Kind of surprising. Well, uh, both of these going back and forth. Rival getting poked down here by Psycho Mashiach. does get the, the shield from Tassadar. But ultimately, we'll end up backing up. Meanwhile, the poke damage is good so far for Rip the Dream in the bottom lane. 
slowly poking him down. Sadat's uh, gonna gonna have to have his team back up and give him a moment here to be able to heal him up from that. Uther not well known for his uh, sustained healing, total burst healer. Lieutenant Dan throwing that orb in, getting all the value on all the minions. Meanwhile, the meanwhile the toss there by uh, Aether Fog puts out of position a little bit, but nice response there and. Uh, Positional advantage here on the Immortals for the side of Rip the Dream. Spawning in the bot, they're going to be able to rotate to it really, really quickly. Meanwhile, full collapse coming in here from Reprot. They are looking to defend and push them off for the moment. Treebeard thinking about going up, but uh, Rival is already down here and poking this away, letting the poison damage do it work. Lieutenant Dan also just kind of staying outside that ring, throwing in the abilities when he gets a chance, and uh, that's exactly how you want to do it. Popo actually jumping in there with the lightning shield, but uh, meanwhile in the top, Treebeard and Psycho Mashia taking that down. Very close here, about a 400 HP difference, which is not much. Both teams look like they are gonna be ready to go ahead and commit to the race here. And so we'll have to see who's got the higher race potential, starting off with a 400 HP lead for the side of Rip the Dream. And it is gonna be, oh, so close, uh, wow. Definite uh, definite race potential advantage to the side of Reprot there. Made up that 400 deficit and then some, winning it by about 1,100. Not going to be much shield on this first one, but that's not really what you're looking for here. You're looking for the ability to um, get your side soakers out, maybe get a couple of front, front towers, and just looking to not lose too much. They do definitely get them up there in time for the Immortal to go ahead and hit the ground running onto this front wall, and they're going to start working on it. They get the front wall. The Immortal's down to about half health. They still have decent poke damage here. Uh, the one the one thing that they don't really have is a good tank and healer for the situation. The MVV charging in on Popo. They go aggressive on him, but the turn is real. They're going to take Diablo in exchange for that Rhaegar kill. Meanwhile, Tall and Nasty TPing up to try and help his team escape. Psycho Mashia in deep, but they're going to go ahead and take a couple kills and the fort off of this. Reaperot. Not backing down up here in the top. Takes a one for three exchange. Gets the fort. Gets about a level lead. And now they're going to go ahead and send Treebeard down to the bottom to answer to uh, to Tassadar here. Zabu Mafu pushing down here solo. Going to help him catch up just a tiny bit there on the XP. But it's still going to end up being about a level lead difference once they get this wave cleared for the side of Reprop. Both teams going to go ahead and Take a few steps back. Tall and Nasty gets scouted out here, though, by Rival. Side of Rip the Dream. Going to go ahead and go to top. Try to grab this. <laughs> the poke damage still coming in from Lieutenant Dan there. MVV looking for, looking for a little aggression. Zabu Mafu taking just one step enough to the left there to get pushed through the wall instead of right into that tower. But the side of Reprot still prioritizing getting in and getting the damage out. They're doing a really nice job of stacking their heroes in one lane and getting the push out. Meanwhile, uh, Camp taken in the top lane, so the response from Rip the Dream is to go ahead and push in the top lane. They're going to get seven off of this, but uh, they're still going to be about a level behind as they go into the second immortal phase. It is spawning. This time, uh, not likely to have that that uh, that nice rotation advantage. It is indeed going to go more the defensive approach here. Left, right, both teams going to retreat, grab their camp, and then look to rotate to the mid and battle. Both teams also clearing out these camps in each lane using their, their pseudo uh, their second supports here. Let's go ahead and get that done. Rip the Dream. Going to go ahead and start to rotate over. Get a little poke out. Actually, they're looking for the gank here on Tall and Nasty. Waiting for him to just come that one step further. The root comes down. The focus damage is there. And that is going to be a pick. Going over to the side of Rip the Dream. Poor little Brightwing. Didn't stand a chance there. Going to instantly rotate onto this. The side of Reprot. Going to back up and lick their wounds a bit by clearing that bottom lane. So they do get the clear on the camp. So uh, Reprot here does have this, a slight advantage in the way of having this uh, camp in the top. 
They are going to send Rhaegar to clear it. So the side of uh, Reproc is just going to back up and see if they can get a little bit of damage out here. They send a few up to defend against anybody rotating up. And they actually catch Tassadar out, but he'll be able to dimensional shift his way on out of trouble there. The team's starting to regroup as Rip the Dream looking to uh, get back in here for the defensive posture. Trying to win another fight. A lot of damage and the Polymorph coming down onto the Arthas. Aether Fog needs to get out of here. And uh, Psycho Mashia doesn't want to let him go for free, but the resets are, um, are being denied here. But there it is. The resets are on, and Lieutenant Dan's going to start getting some work done. It's another pick there onto the Greymane after the Diablo falls. Everybody's so low over on the side of Rip the Dream. Arthas is also dead, but uh, they are going to be able to get in here and get some immortal damage at the very least. Treebeard looking to see if he can do something, but overall, like he's not going to have the damage quite in time. Though the three-man rotation is enough to deter them for the moment. They're still going to chunk this immortal down, though, and that... Uh, Psy Storm is going to end up being enough. Lieutenant Dan almost panked for it, but Aether Fog what a nice job of getting that Howling Blast in there to peel. There's going to be a nearly full shield immortal going over to the side of Rip the Dream. It's going to be pushing in this bottom lane, and level 10 is right around the corner for both of these teams. So it is indeed going to be Splintered Spear on the Lunara, looking for that split damage. It's like the disintegration beam is coming out here. It's going to be Thornwood Vine for for Rival. And right away, they are going in. The wall comes down. Psycho Mashia is going to need to get the D-Shield, but they are going to turn. The APOC comes out. MVV able to throw the Rhaegar into the APOC, and the turn is real as uh, they are able to get the, the Diablo in response. Tall and Nasty getting CC'd, though. But a very nice Emerald win to peel for himself there. They turn around and get the Arthas as well. And that's going to be a two-for-one exchange for the side of Reprot. However, all the while, that full-shielded Immortal gets through the fort. So both these teams coming out fairly even at the end of that exchange. One fort down for each side. Five kills to six. The... Uh, XP count about as different as that kill count. It's about one kill worth of XP at this point. And the, again, the rotation here for Reprod. They go in. They're going to go ahead and knock this fort down. And again, the response on the other side from Rip the Dream. So they're going to go ahead and take the last fort over there. But with that rotational advantage... And Reproc getting a little faster. They're going to be able to push in and get this front wall before the side of Rip the Dream can really do much about it. And they're even looking to go for the keep. The charge in from MVV. Not quite able to get the overpower onto uh, Zabu Mafu. Emerald Wind going to be thrown down by Tall and Nasty to try and peel. MVV still is under duress here. Rival is on the chase trying to get the poison out. Trying to slow them down. The Howling Blast actually going to end up hitting Psycho Mashia. Going to bait out the D-Shield. APOC comes down. And uh, Aether Fog all of a sudden finds himself caught out. The Ancestral comes down from Popo though. Sadat trying to body block Aether Fog in here. But he's just taking a ton of damage. Getting slowed. Psycho Mashia in a little bit too far. Is going to end up going down. Sadat taken down by Lieutenant Dan. And Rip the Dream. Coming in here, pushing them back, saving the fort, getting a couple kills. It's going to give them a huge advantage going into this immortal phase. They'll grab their shaman camp and be able to rotate in here just in time to go ahead and get this uh, get this immortal started. Probably get this to halftime while the side of Reprot goes ahead and grabs their own shaman camp. Which will be pushing a little bit further into these vacant lanes. Halftime is indeed achieved there by Rip the Dream. Reprot going to probably be looking to go to the defensive posture here. That does serve Rip the Dream a little bit, though. Halfway down the, the lane already is their Shaman Camp. They're going to be able to rotate up and clear this while Reprot has this defensive positioning. Really like this uh, macro call here. 
from Rip the Dream, and they know that they have to defend here. They're actually going to go take the fight off of the Immortal. Not necessarily what I would advise here, but they are going to go for it. They know they got to do something. Psycho Mashia diving in with the Dark Light. They are focusing on Arthas, but he is able to slow and give himself just enough room to survive for the moment. The reset's coming in as Diablo and Greyman go down. Sadat also going to end up going down here. The Howling Blast and the Wall to be able to zone five for nothing. Rip the dream. Gonna take a huge team fight win there. Get themselves a full shield and immortal. All the while their camp still pushing in the bottom lane and this is not good if you are reprot. <laughs> flame, flame is lame. I've, I've heard this before. I don't know where I heard this, but I've definitely heard of that. <clears throat> MVV. Psycho Mashia coming in here trying to uh, get around to Lieutenant Dan. And actually the, the, the TP and Polymorph coming in from Tall and Nasty. Trying to punish Lieutenant Dan for being a little too far out here. And uh, that beep may, may work out, maybe? Yeah, a little bit of a baiting uh, B there. Your prod's not going to take that bait. They get a little bit more damage out in the bot lane. But this top lane is the one they really got to worry about here. Level 16 right around the corner and off of this wave... And this tower should be really close for Rip the Dream. That wave will definitely should definitely be enough XP to do it. So close. So close. The trickle XP at this point. Alright. They get level 16. <clears throat> They're going in. They get this front wall pretty much for free. Still over half health on this shield uh, for the Immortal as he goes in. And starts chipping away at this keep combo coming out from Lieutenant Dan onto Psycho Mashia. Aether Fog in here, deep trying to get everybody slowed, but the Emerald Wind will separate them a little bit. However, the turn is real from the ranged damage here from Rip the Dream. They're able to turn around and punish Diablo for going in deep. The resets are in. Uther goes down. Greymane is going to end up falling here. Eventually, with Psycho Mashia getting all he can. But uh, Greymane goes down, and that is going to be it. That is enough for Rip the Dream to go ahead and make this core call. They've still got half the health on the Immortal. They chip through the shields, and that is going to be it. Game 1, Battlefield of Eternity, going over to Rip the Dream. Gotta love the reset comp here from from uh, Rip the Dream. They had a really nice job of being able to punish the Diablo for coming in too deep. MVV getting blown up nearly every time that he came in for those big team fights. Uh, just the poke damage from Tassadar, Leeming, and Lunara all put together. Good solid damage numbers, um, respectively, for, for their roles at the very least. Tassadar also getting ton of siege damage but uh just in general had really really nice um nice team fighting you know that, that was really where they were able to to get the advantages there i felt like in that draft picking the lunara with only the uther on the other side kind of forced them uh kind of forced reprot into a double support that they didn't really want um they didn't really want to have to pick that up there but they end up picking it up they end up uh doing what they can with it but the zoning from emerald wind not quite enough to uh be able to turn those fights not able to go deep enough against that that triple backline comp so rip the dream taking game one there in this best of three series Let's get a hold of these two teams and see where we are going next for game number two It looks like we have a lobby. So we are indeed going to the other Diablo map, Infernal Shrines, for game number two. All right. 
So this should be first pick, first ban. Um, going over to Reprot. Let's go ahead and get these uh, these game counts fixed here. Alright. Rip the dream up one nothing here. Reprod Infernal Shrine is gonna be game number two. Wave clear, definitely something that you want to prioritize on this map. Getting these uh wh whether your strategy is to split push and go for the siege damage while ignoring the punisher, or trying to go after the uh, go after these Punishers by clearing the Shrines. Wave Clear, always a premium. Right away, Reprot uh, hovering that Anubarak ban. Again, you know, a hero that, that pretty much nobody in this game likes to play against. Um, the the CC potential he has, the mobility, the uh, and then the, the Cocoon. Just really, really make it rough to have to play against him. So that is indeed going to be their ban here. Side of Rip the Dream. Didn't want to play against Ariel last match. Let's see if that is indeed what they want to not have to play against again this time around. Sorry guys, I'm looking at something here on Gosu real quick. I guess we'll have to look to do this on the next one. That's, that's kind of strange. All right. Sorry about that, guys. We, um, I am back. So it is Ariel and Uther once again, the pickup here for Reprot. So seeming seeming uh, pretty pretty reminiscent of what we just what we just saw on the last map here. Both teams going with about the same priority levels. We'll have to see if Rip the Dream here wants to change anything up. Last time, prioritizing... Uh, you know, grabbing the Tassadar, going for that double support, which they played pretty much to perfection on the last one. They were able to out-sustain and be able to turn a lot of those fights against Reprot. It came down to it. They do have a lot of options on the board, a lot of really good heroes here on Infernal Shrines for them to be able to pick up. The Gul'dan comes to mind uh, for good solid wave clear potential. Sonya is a hero that you don't normally see taken in the first round, but they are gonna go back to the Arthas and the Tassadar, so no changes coming in here from Rip the Dream. Another, uh, if, if anything, an even better starting two picks here for Infernal Shrines than it was for, the, for um, Battlefield of Eternity. Good wave clear coming from both of these heroes. Uh, a lot of tight corridors for Arthas to be able to cut off their opponents, hit those howling blasts, get the get the slow aura out. So now we'll see if Reprot wants to change anything here for the second draft. Well, they have a lot of things on the table that they could pair with the Uther. They did go with the Grey Main last game. But uh, against the double support, I felt like he was kind of going in and not getting quite enough damage to be able to finish often enough. 
We'll have to see if they want to maybe go with something a little bit more wave clear heavy. So they're going to go with the Stitches and the Lunara. So kind of the pick, pick denial. I'm going to make sure Lunara doesn't end up on the other side. Uh, Stitch is also a good pairing with Uther. The, 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 the stun from Uther can be a really good follow-up to the hook. Along with the Lunara damage and the slow. Be a good way to uh, follow up that Stitch's hook as well. Lunara also having decent wave clear. I wouldn't say her wave clear is the best. Definitely other assassins that can get the job done. But um, mainly I think that's just for the denial. They didn't want to see Lunara on the other side spreading that damage. Making Uther's life uh, kind of rough. They probably have another ban that they want that they have in mind and didn't want to have to ban out the Lunara for that. So, still begs the question of what healer Rip the Dream wants. I think if I'm reprod, I'm probably trying to deny the Rhaegar in this situation, which is going to probably be the next best healer for Rip the Dream. But I'm a support guy. What do I know? The Cassia ban out here. The respect ban coming out from Rip the Dream. And the Vala being hovered again. Kind of thinking along the same lines here for Reprot, wanting to deny some of the best sustained damage dealers in the game so that Uther doesn't quite have to deal with that with his burst healing nature. Rip the Dream. I would, be, I, I would expect them to be considering picking Gul'dan in this situation. Does a lot of what Lunara does, but uh, it's just more ability style damage. Um, but uh, better wave clear as well. So here on Infernal Shrines, you know, I think if I'm trying to choose between Lunara or Gul'dan. I'm, I'm looking towards the Gul'dan. They also uh, could pick up their their healer here. They could also uh, decide to pick up their other frontliner, their solo laner. Um, depends on what they want to save for last, what they want to prioritize. A lot of times that comes to um, on your team, you know, who's more flexible. You know, your, your support player that can pick into anything. Your, your uh, flex solo lane player that can pick anything. Um, We'll have to see what Rip the Dream wants to prioritize. Definitely taking their time thinking about this one. They are going to go with the Brightwing as their second support this time around. And they're going to grab the Greymane. They've already got the Arthas. I feel like uh, Greymane countered pretty hard by Arthas. As, you know, Brightwing also pretty good on the counter. So uh, between the Tassadar Shields, the Pixie Dust from Brightwing... Should be able to allow Greymane to go in and get some engages. But the response here, Ragnaros and Zeratul, one of the very um, frontline heavy comp. Zeratul, of course, almost plays a little bit more like a, like a ranged assassin. Pops in just for a second to get some damage out and then usually will pop out straight away. So... Don't know if I would call him backline. Kind of reminds me of how Greymane plays a little bit in terms of positioning at the very least. But they are going to be looking to isolate targets with that Stitches hook, with the CC follow-up. Ragnaros going to probably be on the solo lane. He's got, with that Molten Core, able to uh, counter these Punishers pretty well, soak up some of that damage and prevent make the uh, Punishers an even worse... Um, prize than they already are. Last pick coming up here for Rip the Dream. I'll have to see if they got want to go more frontline heavy or go back to more uh, backline poke. Backline poke it is. They're going to go with Medivh. Makes them very mobile. Kind of triple support here. Totally this, uh, this comp totally meant to enable Greymane uh, to get in there after a target that Arthas is already, uh, you know, trying to isolate, trying to slow down. And Greymane goes in with all the shields in the world. To try and knock them around.
Sorry, guys. Trying to get the uh, stream added here. See if uh, it lets me do that. Alright, we will have to wait on that one because we are loaded in here for game number two. Rip the Dream up 1 0 here over Reprot. On the left, Rival going to be playing the Grey Main Popo on the Bright Wing. Lieutenant Dan on the Medivh. Aether Fog once again going to be on the Arthas. And Zabu Mafu, for a second time in the series, going to be playing the Tassadar. This is Rip the Dream. And on the right, MVV going to be playing the Zeratul. Tall and Nasty on Stitches. Treebeard on the Lunara. Psycho Mashia on the uh, on the Ragnaros. There we go. And Sadat going to be playing Uther. This is Reaprot. All right. So right away, five teams going on into the mid. Aether Fog gets hooked. Follow up. Some of the follow up damage is there, but uh, Aether Fog going to be able to slow him down a bit with the Aura. Howling Blast in use here. Got some, uh, got some stacks off of that uh, Howling Blast. A couple of them. We'll be checking in with uh, those quest talents as we go along here. All the while, uh, nice damage coming out on the wave clear. A lot of wave clear potential here for the side of Reprot in this one. Stitches uh, having one one of the best wave clear tanks in the game. Lunara also having decent wave clear. Uther's wave clear gets a little better after level four if he decides to pick up the um, burning the burning rage talent. I'm not I can't remember the exact name of it at the moment. Rival getting focused here. MVV. Getting in there, getting a lot of damage done, but also getting poked in return. He's going to have to blink out. Psycho Mashiach going to have to also back off the pursuit here. Meanwhile, the three-man rotations continue here for the side of uh, Reprot. All the while, Lieutenant Dan kind of rotating around in that Raven form. I have no idea where they are. And Zeratul goes down in the top. Reprot losing uh, one of their members in that 2v2 in the top. Meanwhile, Shrine activating in the bot lane. Tassadar getting poked down. He's going to have to back off for the moment. Both teams just continuing to prioritize the wave clear. Not going straight to the Shrine. Treebeard will eventually get it, start, get it started here. Zabu Mafu actually stealing the first of those Shrine minions from the Lunara. Tassadar actually not going with the uh, not going with the auto attack build. Oh, Aether gets hooked in. The damage is there. Lieutenant Dan throwing down the force of will and the portal to be able to get him out of there. Saved by the uh, Medivh. As I was saying, going with that uh, Psy infusion talent. So we're going to be looking to uh, get a little bit more out of the Psy storm. Meanwhile, the side of Rip the Dream not focusing at all on the Shrine here. Instead, sending two to the top. Rival and Popo doing what they can in the top. So they're going to give up this first Shrine and the first Punisher here. A Mortar Punisher going to be pushing in the bottom lane while the three-man pushes in top. Psycho Mashiach doing what he can to try and negate this. But they do take the front wall and, more importantly, the well of Reprot in that top lane. So they are praying to the RNG gods right now that they uh, get the top lane Punisher this next time around. A little bit of uh, XP advantage here for Reprot as they start to uh, take down these towers. It's only going to be a little bit more. They're definitely going to win the race to 7 here is the side of Reprot. Get a little bit of damage on the fort. They get the front wall but they do not get the well in the bottom lane. We'll have that available should the next Punisher phase come down here. Or well, it won't act, I should say the next Punisher phase that comes down here. We'll be not will not be on the next rotation. We know for sure it will be either in the mid or the top. Let's we'll see who RNG decides to favor. Well, both teams just getting out to lanes. 
camp started up here by Rival in the top lane. Lieutenant Dan going to give him a little bit of help with that force of will. Four-man rotation to the bot here for Reprot. They're going to go ahead and finish off what they started. It's Abu Mafu trying to help out the, uh, the poor innocent fort at this moment with the shield. Not quite enough, though. They will be able to get that fort. We'll aid them a little bit in their race to 10 here. They got about half a level lead at this point. Sadat is not going to be able to make it out. Aether Fox spots him. We're even going to get the TP in here, and Sadat is going to go down. It's going to be a little bit of a help in this race to 20. And they're going to start pushing this front wall in the bot. Get a little bit of damage on it, but uh, Uther healing still available in his ghost form there for a bit and it is indeed gonna be in top the rng gods are smiling down on rip the dream this night and uh oh but the hook tall and nasty spitting in the face of the gods in this moment and uh you'll see both teams again not prioritizing going straight to these but instead looking towards these camps for first prioritizing uh, putting the wave pressure out level 10 still a little still almost a level away here for reprot they do have the ability to try and soak it out and grab that level 10 so it looks like uh, mid is going to be focused here for rip the dream they go ahead and grab both of these camps and again they are not interested in contesting for this punisher pre-10 they are instead just soaking the lanes out letting the side of reprot Go ahead and grab the shrine. They are going to push in this bottom lane. Level 10 is going to be achieved by both of these teams here. Without really seeing uh, a big team fight happen at all this one so, on this one so far. But Reprot deciding to go ahead and take this front wall. So they're going to get a nice amount of work done onto this fort before we ever even see the Punisher come out. They're gonna be looking to get keep damage in that bot lane. But on the other side, the three-man rotation from Rip the Dream has taken the bottom fort. Psycho Mashia doing what he can to try and defend this, but Three man is able to get a little bit off of that front wall. They turn on Psycho Mashia, but the Zilfiris smash gets the kill. The return kill is grabbed, though. Meanwhile, in the top, the Punisher has been taken. So, one for one here. Arthas for Ragnaros. Oh, Lieutenant Dan able to bait the Punisher over, but the hook is good from Tall and Nasty. The follow-up also there to be able to take him down. They tried to bait that Punisher into the mid, but nothing doing. Aether Fog is here, however. Uh, they do get the hook out on him. Emerald win to zone. Agteb33, thank you very much for the follow. Much appreciated. Aether Fog going to be able to chase down the stitches, and that's going to be a two-for-nothing exchange. Rip the Dream defends their keep. Gets a couple of kills here. I'm going to even out the XP as well. A lot of that front wall is gone, though. So both teams uh, getting advantages on each side of the map. But it, have they gone too far? Aether Fog is going to get focused here. The Force of Will keeps him alive for a little while. And another Force of Will comes in. He's hanging on by a thread. And they're able to keep Arthas alive and get another couple kills. Uther goes down along with um, Ragnaros. Now, we don't see enough Ragnaros. Camp is successfully stolen. And right now, the uh, shields are real over on the side of Rip the Dream. Go ahead and get this camp started here in the top lane spreading out getting xp 
Zabumafu, though. I have to be careful here. Dimensional shifts. Tall and nasty. Looks like he's looking for that hook. Oh, the Divine Storm misses. And, uh, oh, the Emerald Wind comes in from Popo. But it is going to be Sulfura smash to snipe here from Psycho Mashia. Lieutenant Dan getting that portal in just a hair too late. And Tassadar falls. Nice pick there by Reprot and a good timing on it as well. It'll be about a 12 second window after this shrine pops. The Tassadar will still be hanging out, respawning. You see the, uh, I forget the name of it. The Leyline Seal coming out there. But the VP to try and disengage. It looks like the side of Reprot might actually still want this engagement. Tall and nasty, very low here. The, and Brightwing does get hooked here. The Polymorph on the turn, though. Ice, Ice Block should be able to get him out of there safely. Aether Fog also able to make it out somehow there. All the while, Tall and Nasty needs to get some heals. Camp in the top lane getting some advantage. MVV going to go ahead and go up and clear that out. Peekaboo applied here by Popo. Give them a nice uh, view of where they're going here. Portal in as uh, every member going in deep here. Aether Fog getting poked down as is Rival. He's going to end up being the first to fall here. Treebird leaping striking all over the place here. They do get the return kill on Uther, but he's going to now go into ghost form. Be able to get a lot of heals out here. Aether Fog goes down, or is uh, about to go down here still staying alive somehow but he will eventually fall brightwing falls gray main already down one for three exchange here reprot winning the fight on the shrine gonna get them a little bit closer to 16 as this frozen punisher comes out a third punisher in a row for reprot that was the first punisher that ripped the dream actually decided to contest it did not go well for them however They are going to be able to get this fort in short order here. Tassadar actually going out to soak the side lanes. And uh, Psycho Mashia actually going to go ahead and pop the Molten Core to get a little bit of extra siege damage out. Right now, Rip the Dream not even willing to try and bait this Punisher out. Too much follow-up with uh, Tall and Nasty and that hook potential. So it looks like this keep is pretty much just going to go down for free. Not to mention this is a Frozen Punisher. So offering a little bit more CC in the form of those uh, freezes. MVV gets in there with the VP canceled just in time for the Sulfurus to come out. And Brightwing will end up going down off the heels of that ice block. 5v4 engaged here. Aether Fog in the back is getting poked down. Medivh will end up falling in the back to the Zeratul. Arthas also goes down. The Punisher goes down. But uh, MVV getting poked down by the core stays alive. Zabu Mafu still a little bit on the chase here with that Archon. Oh, gets hooked in. The leaping strike. The follow-up is real. And now it looks like Reprot's going to go ahead and try and go in after this with only Greymane alive. They are looking to take this series to Game 3, and that is indeed what's going to happen. Game number 2 going over to Reprot here on Infernal Shrines. And there's nothing that that poor squirrel can do about it. Ten to ten on the kill count. Rip the Dream coming out with a very unique composition here. Uh, really a, a Carrie Greymane comp. A lot of sustain, but uh, just not quite enough sustain to be able to get them through the uh, combos. So many combos on, on the CCs and the damage. MBV getting in there, getting some nice uh, some nice engagements on the Zeratul. Meanwhile, just not quite enough damage. To be able to take advantage of uh, the you know the the Uther solo heals over on the side of Reprot, 
Uh, Gray Mane had a ton of damage, but he's pretty much the only one on the team that was uh, d doing doing a solid amount of damage. Zeratul's numbers, of course, uh, not really reflective of a high damage output. His uh, his damage is more easily targetable, and that's kind of the that's kind of the point of how he plays. All right. So it looks like these guys are already ready for game number three. We're going to be going to Cursed Hollow for this one. Alright, looks like these guys went ahead and swapped sides on me, so let me go ahead and get these team names correct here. And in we go. Reprot versus Rip of the Dream. Game number three. These teams have managed to tie it up here. Alright, so right away the Stitches Band coming out here from Rip the Dream. These two teams have swapped sides. So last time it was Reprot indeed coming out with that Stitches play. So they decided to go ahead and uh, change this one up. Meanwhile, Anubarak yet again being hovered by Reprot. Uh, they, have, they have not wanted to play against it all day. I don't see why that would change now. So they are indeed going to switch it over to Tassadar. Last second swap. So uh, Rip the Dream been playing Tassadar both of these first matches. Uh, he's, he's a hero that we see prioritized quite a lot. And Uther is still going to be the pickup, um, the first pickup out of these band phases. So uh, every single game, Uther has been that top priority healer. This time it is going to go over to Rip the Dream, though, rather than Reprot. So we'll have to see how they go ahead and use uh, arguably the strongest healer in the meta. And Reprot going to go ahead and take the Anubarak. They say thank you very much. 
Also pick up the Ariel. Definitely one of the best. Definitely, I would say, the best sustained healer in the game under certain circumstances. You know, she does have to have a good battery behind her, but uh, it's okay to draft her this early. There are a bevy of different um, different options they do have. Meanwhile, two picks coming up here for Rip the Dream. We'll have to see what they want to prioritize here. Uther, they still could go a lot of different directions. They are going to go ahead and pick up the Lunara, yet again choosing to uh, pair that with the Uther to make sure that the uh, Lunara is not there to counter those Uther heal, heals and Arthas uh, gonna for a third time be the frontline tanking choice here for Rip the Dream. It's been going it's been going alright for them so far. On this map, uh, one of the things you want to prioritize, of course, is the ability to poke and interrupt on those tributes. So uh, Arthas, Lunara, Uther, all having different things that they can use as ranged abilities to be able to poke. However, they are probably going to be looking for hard engage here. With the Uther heals, you don't necessarily want to see those long, drawn-out team fights. Uther all about those burst heals going in, getting the job done. Uh, Genji I'm going to be hovered as the ban out here. Not wanting to see the Divine Shield um, and Dragon Blade combo, but instead they switch it up to the Dahaka. Not wanting to see the brush stock from behind even more it is a pretty good counter to Ariel um, Ariel one of the least mobile heroes in the game um, does does have the detainment strike to try and defend against the uh, Dahaka but that's got to be timed pretty well if you're gonna detainment strike yourself out of a uh, out of a drag Brightwing gonna be picked up here for the side of rip the dream So both teams uh, eliminating a couple of the global options. Falstad still available. Abathur also still available. A lot of people don't like to talk about that Abathur around here, but it is his map of choice here. Abathur strongest on Cursed Hollow. But uh, neither team yet committing to any heroes that you necessarily want to see paired with the Abathur clone. We'll have to see what they want to, uh, try, to try to choose for that. Or if they want to choose anything for it. Think about Reprot. With Ariel and Anubarak, they haven't shown much. We know they want a hope generator. Lunara, usually one of those hope generation options. But uh, that's off the table. Vala is the other obvious choice. But would kind of force Reprot into going with a double support. So they are going to go into the double support. Indeed, they're going to choose the Malfurion. Interesting choice in the Malfurion as the second support. It is going to give Vala the potential to get a little bit more healing with that regrowth, but uh, between Ariel and Malfurion, it's all upfront heals. Um, well, it's, it's, it's heal over time from Malfurion and, and upfront heals from Ariel, but no shielding. Um, so there's nothing for Ariel, to, or there's nothing for Vala to be able to go in with um, to kind of add to that tiny hero pool. Instead, they're just trying to replenish that hero pool. So if I'm Rip the Dream here, I'm going for dive, focus damage. They've already got the Uther. So uh, Greymane could be a really good option. Another strong frontliner. Um, could possibly look to Illidan here. It's a good map for Illidan as well. Um, Genji still on the table. So it is going to be the Illidan Abathur. So they decide to go full dive. They take the Abathur. Illidan will be the clone target. Lunara is going to chunk them down. Illidan's going to try and chase them down afterwards. Or hunt them down, as it were. 
Illidan, an amazing jungler for this map as well. Somebody that you can easily send to scoop up these camps in the interim of these tribute phases. A couple of the other good counters out there for Illidan are still available, though. The Sonya could be an option here for the side of Reprot to be able to counter-engage the Illidan. Uh, Webwrap probably going to be uh, targeting that Illidan. The Brightwing's been taken off the table, so that kind of foreshadowed the Illidan pick a little bit. Uh, we've already got the double support, so we're probably not going to see the Lili coming out. I stand corrected. So it is indeed the Lili. The triple support uh, really on display by Reprot in this one. Literal triple support. And uh, carry Vala. That's all. That's all they're thinking here. They are gonna try and out sustain against the solo support Uther. Should be should be an interesting one to watch at the very least. Both these teams, one and one here in this first round of HGC Open Division action. Flame is lame waiting on the winner of this one. Prepare yourself for battle. All right, we are loaded in here to Cursed Hollow. Game number three. On the left, in the blue trunks, it is Reprot, MVV. On the Anubarak, Sadat. On Ariel, Tall and Nasty. On the Lili, Psycho Mashia playing the Vala. And Treebeard is going to be on the Malfurion. And these guys are sporting those club horses. Just saying. Rip the Dream on the right. Zabu Mafu playing the Illidan. Popo on the Uther. Rival going to be playing the um, the Abathur. Aether Fog is going to be on the Arthas. And Lieutenant Dan going to be playing Lunara. This is Rip the Dream. The Detainment Strike coming out to zone. MVV also burrow charging in to stun Aether Fog. They try and get a little bit of the cheese damage out here in bot. Does reprot. And they get about half the tower worth of damage on it. Trying to punish this Anubar, this uh, Anubar, not the Anubarak, the uh, Abathur pick early here. Oh, and a little bit of uh, anti synergy there. MVV burrow charging in. Sadat gonna go ahead and hit that whip button and save him from the charge. However, the poke damage still real. Sadat and Psycho Mashia, the 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 Ariel and the battery working together here in perfect sync. Well, in the top lane, Tal and Nasty doing all he can against uh, the Illidan Uther combo, but it does look like uh, Zabu Mafu is going to go ahead and go ahead and rotate out and uh, work on the middle a little bit. Treebeard, not sure if he's going to be able to do too much about that. Does actually hit the root, but uh, Zabu Mafu using the mobility of Illidan to get out of that. Meanwhile, in the bot, the assault continues here. They are only backing up to clear the minion wave long enough for the next minion wave to get in here and soak these shots. Lieutenant Dan doing what he can to try and defend, but uh, when you're low health, you just can't go in too far. Right now, Rip the Dream not panicking here, not giving up the picks, just kind of letting Reprot do what they want to do here, getting an advantage in the bot lane. It is a nice advantage though for the side of Reprod. Their boss is going to be walking down this mid lane should they be able to capture it later on in this one. So after getting that we will see both teams go ahead and rotate out to grab their camps. This bottom lane going to be picked up first. Malfurion kind of be the one uh, assigned with this task. He's having a little bit of a hard time clearing it in time. For Reprot. While the tribute is up, but uh, neither team rotating very much to it. Tall and Nasty rotates 
Aether Fog, primarily focusing on uh, of, uh, clearing that top wave, just coming in for the occasional interrupts. But here comes Reprot, the triple support in here to try and carry the uh, Vala. It is going to be full damage Lily coming out, though, from Tall and Nasty. Also full damage Malfurion coming out with that level 1 talent. I'm going to be looking to pick up these uh, minion waves. Trying to stack that minion wave. Let's see where he is on that. 31 so far. He's now gotten full Moonfire for the reduction. Meanwhile, in the bottom, Zabu Mafu getting a nice advantage in the bottom lane. Aiding the push of those Siege Giants. But Reaperot has gone right back to what their comp does. The CC chain coming down onto Lieutenant Dan. He will fall here. So Rip the Dream giving up first blood here to Reaperot. As they aid the push of these uh, Siege Giants, Popo kind of up here trying to do what he can, but uh, there's really just not much that an Uther can do in this situation. Aether Fog does go ahead and pick up the camp. Tall and Nasty in the bottom has gone ahead and cleared away that bottom Siege Camp. Treebeard going to be on the case here trying to clear this mid camp. Level and a half lead so far for Reprot. Most of that is um, in in the structure damage, though. So if we do see the side of Rip the Dream get some sort of an advantage later on here and get some of these structures, I do believe they can catch up that level and a half fairly quickly. But they're not even going to try to contest. Well, I shouldn't say that. Popo does go in and get the one poke on it. Looks like he's going to be in position to try and do it again. But it's going to back off as Lunara gets caught out in the rotation. Reaperot gonna go ahead and push directly in to the boss here. Well, they're actually gonna catch Popo out a little bit here. Let's see if they wanna chase him down. No, they're gonna turn around and refocus onto the boss. Aether Fog and Popo are here, but I don't know if they can really do much about this. Lunara also now gonna be able to march back into this. The three-man root coming out from the boss. MVP boss right here. Getting more roots than Arthas at this point. Lieutenant Dan is here. And they are going to be here to try and contest this. We even do see Illidan rotating up, but Tall and Nasty is also here. They are going to back off this, and the boss is stolen here by Reaperot. The late game comp of Rip the Dream. They're not, they're not pushing in too far. They're not trying to do what their comp is not designed to do, which is try to fight them pre-10. However, Reaperot with an entire two-level lead at this point and that is before the boss ever hits this front wall. And they've got the four-man commitment to try and uh, aid in this boss push in the bot lane. And we do have the tribute there right near that bot lane. And it does look like Anubarak is going to rotate out to grab that four-man pressure in the top. Detainment strike coming down on Aether Fog. Meanwhile, the tribute fight has started here. Zabu Mafu versus MVV. Aether Fog gets hit by the water dragon coming out and uh, that is going to be a pick going over to the side of Reprot. Three for nothing so far. Zabu Mafu doing what he can to try and pressure down here but the keep goes down in the top lane. Zabu Mafu able to, able to block for now. MVV from picking up the, uh, the tribute and the curse. However, Trying to dance his way in. MVV will get back. We'll be able to get the tap. And the rotation is coming down. These guys are going to be ready to secure this curse now. Or maybe not. Maybe they're going to look for the picks first. Coming off the root. They get the CC down. The detainment strike. The root. And Illidan goes down. Level 10, still about half a level away here. Treebeard going to go ahead and cap this one. And they're going to look to push in the bottom lane. Still no level 10s for Rip the Dream. Reprot is pu pushing on all cylinders here, trying to do what they can to punish this passive comp that Rip the Dream has built here. And uh, they can't really do a whole lot about this. Avatar soaking in the mid. Level 10 will finally come in here 
four, Rip the Dream, Leaping Strike, Hunt, Divine Shield, and it does look like Aether Fog is going to go ahead and pop that Army of the Dead. But the turn is real. The Twilight Dream, the Water Dragon, Arthas Falls, and the right away they're going to take down the clone as well. Rev Rev comes down onto Lieutenant Dan, who Leaping Strikes away, but the keep is down. They are going to turn onto the mid keep as well. They don't even have the fort down, but who cares? They just want the catapults at this point. Death timer's too low for them to want to go core here. So instead, they're just going to focus down that mid keep and then look to rotate out every keep down here for Rip the Dream. They've gotten their level 10, but is it too late? Only one structure left on the map, and it is not a keep. It is indeed that mid fort. Rip the Dream rotating to uh, at least try to defend that one. Boss play coming in here for Reprot. And Rip the Dream's got to do something here. They've got to uh, put something on the back, back foot. But the turn is real. The Water Dragon comes out. Reign of Vengeance not quite finding its mark. Rival going to go ahead and clone Arthas. So we got double Arthas slow in here. But uh, the real Arthas is the first one to fall down. Zabu Mafu also following here. And the sustain is real from Reprod. They are able to get a triple kill here on to Rip the Dream. And now they are just going to look to march through the bottom lane. Death Timer is low enough that uh, Rip, Rip the Dream is going to be up in time to try to defend this. But they are going to the core. They know that that, uh, that ultimate evolution is not going to be up. Army of the Dead popped here by Aether Fog. They are going to still try to defend this. Water Dragon comes out to slow him down. The Twilight Dream, the Reign of Vengeance, and Arthas falls. Zabu Mafu getting very low. They are going to turn and start to focus on to Uther. He falls. And now they finally turn their attention to the core. Talon Nasty getting low. But that triple support able to keep him up. The Mule is on the core. But they get two more picks. Uh, well, one more pick. They get the Illidan pick. The Web Wrap also down onto Lieutenant Dan. He's going to be zoned, and that is going to be it. Game three and the series going over to Reprot. That triple support, just too much to handle. 11 to nothing here in this final map. In this final map. You know, single, single support in the Ariel, double off support with the Lili and the Malfurion. They had plenty of damage coming out from Tall and Nasty and Treebeard to be able to contribute. The, the, the two of them were only 4k behind Vala in this very short match, but all the healing you could ever want, really, on one team. And you can see the talents, you know, very damage-focused here from both of these. The Water Dragon coming out along with Twilight Dream. Those are, those are not support heroics, so... Very impressive coming out from Reprot. We will look to continue to follow these guys moving on into the next match here.